Somebody in here has similar attitude as I do. And I'm here to talk about where those things lead you. I already know by the number of heads that's in here, there's a ton of people that are just like me. You just don't know it yet. For the last four years, I've been traveling to some of the largest universities in the country speaking to the Greek life students. I came here to talk about my life story. I came here to talk about the choices that I made, the attitude that I had, and the consequences that came with those things. All across the country, we're trying to teach Greek life students about their choices and the consequences that come with them, about addiction and about mental health. My junior year, I signed a three-year contract with Airwalk Shoes. I was the only amateur in the United States that had a contract with Airwalk Shoes. My senior year, I touched down on the BMX Racing Magazine cover, the largest BMX racing publication in the world. My senior year, I was ranked number one in the country. My senior year, I got sponsored by Spy Sunglasses. My senior year, everybody would have said, Hoff's gonna be successful. That dude's gonna go off and race BMX. He's gonna be super successful. Don't worry about that guy. But what they didn't understand was when I took my helmet off, I wanted to kill myself. A lot of students come from a background where they wouldn't see themselves slipping into an issue with addiction. And the reality is, is addiction impacts people in different ways. And you don't know who it's gonna hit. As soon as you get this drug, your body's right back to normal. And because of that, you'll do whatever it takes to get it. Students need to be educated on substance abuse and alcoholism, but how do you do that? Do you bring in a person that shares statistics? Do you bring in a doctor? Do you bring in a cop? The kids aren't going to listen to that stuff. And I think that that's why I've been so successful, is that I'm telling my life story, but talking about a lot of the things that I went through at their same age and how they can deal with that, how they can come together to have conversations with their brothers and their sisters and asking themselves some of the tough questions. When I put my gift away, I started going to parties. But I told myself this, I don't want to smoke weed every single day like my friends do. I said, I'll just smoke once a month. Next weekend rolls by, my friends know I smoke now. So they say, Hoff, you want to smoke? I said, yeah, I'll smoke. When you walk through this door and you step through for drugs, you don't get to turn around and walk back out because you think you're done. That's not the way it works. Adderall is the same thing as crystal meth, it just comes in a different package. And because it comes in a different package, we look at it and say, oh, I'll just take it for studying. I could just take it and I'll study better. I'll give me some more energy. What we don't understand is, that's the same way that I walk through the door telling myself it's not that big of a deal. It was very engaging, also very relatable because of the level of honesty that um, Tony achieves while he speaks. It's really easy to stay engaged the entire time. You guys need to recognize when one of your brothers or sisters is different. One of the fraternities reached out to me and said, you know what, after your talk, we decided as a house that every week we're gonna have check-ins where we talk about the issues that we're dealing with, who has depression, who has anxiety, who's isolating from these reasons, who might be a drug addict, who's having these issues, because we don't want our brothers to go through the similar situations that you went through, you had those tough conversations. I walked out on my family over 15 Vicodin. For the next two years, I go through hell. Bringing me in to speak puts the kids in front of a person who went from the cover of a magazine to committing a home invasion robbery to being homeless and going to prison and somehow becoming successful after all of the negative things that happened in his life. And before I jumped over that chain link fence into that baseball stadium to sleep in that announcer's tower, I told myself, you're gonna die soon. I wanted to stop so bad, I didn't know how. I tried so many different times to stop using. I just couldn't stop. And yet 10 years later from that moment, I was sitting in Rio de Janeiro as a coach at the Olympics. One choice can change the rest of your life. Thank you.